So if we go back to the actual slide here, uh, this is the same thing except that now it's kind of in 2D. So this is pretty much the ray intersection and this is the moving triangle. And that creates a what we call a ray intersection path as the triangle moves. So if the threshold is really, really high, obviously these samples will be less in numbers and also because there's less samples being taken, obviously recreation or reconstruction of the motion is going to be quite poor. Lowering the threshold allows the actual sample to be a little bit more dense, so that will actually produce a better quality. Keep in mind that each of these dots here, which is basically the intersection point of the ray as it motion blurs, will call all the material shaders or reflection shaders. Glossy reflection, transparency, final gathering, all the lights, so if the scene contains, for example, three area light, then these three area light is going to be called for this one, this one, and this one. That is why, actually, people say, well, whenever a motion blur has been enabled, I get a major rendering slowdown. Uh, that's really important to understand that motion blur threshold is there, actually, to help you out. So, bottom line, keep in mind that one camera sample, which is here, can actually trigger multiple motion blur samples along the path here and each of those samples can actually call multiple sec secondary rays, light, shadows, final gathering and reflection.